Okay, we're back here at TB's, part two of making, starting to work out the hula knife blade. Uh, this is just a little discuit that you can buy. They're thinner than the than what the grinders are. And I won't ever have to sharpen or work this steel. It's already made. The steel's already hardened. I'm not even gonna bother to harden it. That was I come off of a deli saw, and it will work just like it is just fine. So here's what I'm going to do. I've got to change that off there. Let me find a, something to get that off there with. I'm going to have to have a wrench. What size would that be? About a, probably an inch looks like. I do have some big wrenches, but not in here, so I'm probably going to have to use a, a crescent if I don't find a decent wrench to break it loose. I might have a socket in the size. That might do the trick. This old ratchet here, it's just been an old ratchet I had ever since my daddy's. Back when I was a kid, when he was a mechanic. Yeah, my uncles, I learned a lot of mechanical from my father and from my uncles. My uncle Jim. Daddy's brother. Yeah, I had two Uncle Jims. Uh, my daddy had a brother named Jim, and there's Jim, John, and Claude. Matter of fact, there's four of them. Now there's, uh, I think Claude's gone. Jim and John was still, was still okay to help today, still living. They're up years. Good men, hard working men. They've all served in the armed forces, done their time, come home, worked all their lives. Neither one of them draws any VA, to my knowledge. They could. Uh, one of them could, I think. But uh, my uncle Jim was only in four years. John, I think he was in seven. And then uh, Claude, uh, well, he was in, let's just say it that way. Uh, but he wasn't that he wasn't a good soldier. He was just an uncontrollable soldier. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying here. So he got locked up the brig and disqualified without pay, you know, without any benefits. But it wasn't on purpose, it just crap happened. They wouldn't let him come out of the service when he needed to leave for his mother was sick and he needed to come home. And they wouldn't let him, he was stationed in Hawaii and needless to say, the colonel got in his face and he forgot that the colonel was his commanding officer for a minute. And I reckon he overhauled him. And you know, when you lay a hand on your superior commander, you're fixing to have problems, <laughs> which he did. He got put in the brig and a whole bunch of problems, you know. But uh, they get, they kicked him out of the military as an undesirable uh, soldier because he was uncontrollable. And, uh, he would take orders to an extent of but if he, he would think on his own like the rest of us Thompsons do, and that's why we don't stay in the military very long, because we think on our own and don't do as we're told always. Sometimes we do what we think is best for the, the, the men in our battalion or field to protect their people, and government don't like that. Sometimes superior order wants us to sacrifice ourselves so that they can uh, use us more or less as lure so they can bring in another team or another group of soldiers to wipe out the objective. And what we were was what is lure. And they don't care that it kills us <laughs> if you're under orders. And there's also been times when uh, uh, there was a soldier in the family that had a, one of those enemy leaders in his sights where they told him to hold the shot. Now, my cuz had him dead to rights and all he'd had done to make one shot, we probably wouldn't have had the second go for him had he got to make that one shot. But he didn't. Here's that rivet, one, one rivet I was looking for. I just got one for the machetes. But you don't have to have steel rivets to hold the, the knife together if you got good glue. 
And this egg glue holds up pretty good even in the weather, not bad. I haven't, of course, I haven't tested it every day and every day to see how it do, you know, but it, 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 it dries pretty good. It takes usually three, four, or six hours, I guess, overnight. That egg glue, once it's set, so it's in good shape. It's a good setup, but it holds pretty good, and that's what I like about the egg glue. It, uh, it'll bubble up on you. It's like it's right here on the lane's knife. Get back to showing you that. Right on the end of it, I don't know if y'all can see that. I've got uh, that egg glue and some sawdust in there to fill that in good. And yeah, I could sand some more on it, but if I do, I would have to re, re shellac it again with that periuthylene. Oh, whatever you pronounce that, that polyuthylene. And it's good stuff. And, once it dries, it turns a lot of water. It's almost dry now, but it's still just a little tacky. By morning, it'll set up good and hard, and that'll be a good little knife. It's good for the kitchen, and, and that'll keep the water from running or knife, because in the kitchen, you know you're going to get your knife wet a lot. Even out in the bush, your knife's not going to get wet a lot. That's why I like that polyethylene. What a name. It amounts to it. Uh, some type of varnish with oil in it that what it does, it makes a coat uh, uh, over your, looky there, I've got to get that sealed down or that will let hair in there. I guess it is now. Just didn't look at drying my knife too over here. Okay, now I've just about to give up finding the wrench and see if this sock here will fit it. Yep, I bought it too blind that time. Well, dumb dumb. Boy, did I do a good one. Just getting tired, I guess. Okay, tell you what, I'm gonna break this loose. And I'm gonna put this on this grinder. Oh, I could use the skill saw, but I prefer to use this little disc grinder. One nice thing about it, you can change each side of the handle on this. It's kind of universal. It's got a little button up here for, well, now, see if I break that nut loose, I'm going to break mine loose. Damn, knock the bark off of me. I got it here, but I can't hear it break. Sockets, weak, sorry, crap. Alright, hang on. If I can just get it to quit slipping. Now I've got too big a bite, but I've done it. Now, we got it. I'm going to get my socket back off. I use these disc grinders to cut out metal, socket the or to lay a edge on the, and sharpen up the knife the first time, and then I use a file to keep my knife sharp. Now this is the kind of knife you never have to sharpen. It's that surrogated steel that they make it uh, out of for your meat deli saws. The meat deli saw that I had that blade fit had, uh, uh oh. Now, how am I supposed to do that? Well, I think this goes down in the center of it. But you got to line it up. That's the only thing about this kind of thing. Pretty sure it goes on here. Yeah, I think it goes on. Okay. Now, to tighten this thing back up. I want to get it right in the center of that so it'll tighten up the right way. Okay, that's not as tight as the tight as it needs to be. Now I'm going to try to work this knife out. Let me go ahead and pull it this way for my cut. Pass there so I don't get into the vice. 
Let's get kind of funny.